Getting your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube is no easy feat, but it is a lot harder when your audio is trash. Is your audio trash? If so, we're gonna fix that problem right now. And if we're just meeting, my name is Woody and this is Grown Up Pains where we talk about all things business and personal growth. And make sure to keep watching until the end of the video for a pro tip on how to sync your audio if you recorded it separately from your video. And the first thing that I wanna talk about today is leveling up your audio before you level up your video or your lighting. When it comes to leveling up your video, your smartphone camera is good enough for now, and it'll probably be good enough for a while. Most of these cameras are excellent. They film in at least 1080p, full HD, if not 4K. Some of them even film in 8K, depending on the kind of phone that you have. So as long as you have enough memory on board or you have a way to sync your video from the phone over to a computer, I would not spend time on leveling that up just yet. Now, setting up your lighting can really help. We do that. Um, I've got a video light up here with a pillowcase over it and it works pretty well. I kill all the other lights. I've got an ambient light behind me, um, but it's not the first thing that you need to do. I really believe you can work with a combination of natural lighting and just what you already own or have in, around in the house. So don't feel like you need to spend a ton of money on video lighting, but if you want to use something like what we're using, it didn't you know, cost too much, we'll put a link in the description. We are an Amazon affiliate, so if you click a link and choose to buy something, we might earn a small commission from that, but we will link to what we're using down in the description below. So before upgrading your video and before upgrading your lighting, audio comes first. Think about videos that you've watched where it probably wasn't the best quality. It may have even been kind of grainy and ugh, just a little bit terrible to look at, but they were answering the question or the, the thing that you were searching for, and it wasn't terrible to listen to. Did you watch it all the way through? Probably. My point is that people will keep watching as long as your audio is good and the content is coming at a good pace and you are actually answering the question that they were searching for an answer for. Um, if you're actually delivering the thing that they clicked on the video for. So we're gonna go through a few levels of different kinds of audio setups that you could use if you're just getting started on YouTube or maybe if you're a little bit further along. And we'll kind of talk about the pros and cons of each of these levels along the way. Level one is just use the onboard microphone that is on your smartphone. And the pro for this is pretty straightforward. It's easy. You don't have to have any extra equipment. You don't have to plug anything in. You just hit record and your audio is automatically synced to your video. So you don't have to overthink anything. Now the cons of using the onboard mic with your smartphone is that the quality will vary, especially based on the type of phone that you have, as well as the type of room that you're in. Is it a boomy room? Is there a lot of echoey sounds? And actually, how far away are you from the camera and the microphone that is attached to it? So does your audio sound far away because you had to put the camera a little bit farther away than you'd like? And the last con for using the onboard mic with your smartphone is that it probably doesn't come with any kind of noise canceling. Then moving on from level one, we're coming to level two, where I would recommend a USB microphone that can plug directly into your PC or Mac or directly into your phone, depending on how you wanna make your setup work. Now, the pros about using a USB mic is that it is pretty easy, it's plug and play. And although there are some higher end USB mics, you can really get a decent one at a low cost. This one in particular costs about $27 on Amazon. I think it was on a discount, so normally it's 30 or 35. Um, but, uh, and you know, the audio is not perfect. I mean, you're listening to it right now. Let me know in the comments, how good is this audio? Uh, I definitely had to play around with the settings and make sure the gain wasn't too high and make sure it wasn't you know too close or uh, too far away from me. So uh, this is kind of the most optimal setting I've found for this microphone, but I will also say it's plugged directly into my smartphone via a USB hub. It's not going into the computer. So I know that the audio is synced up. Uh, I just can't tweak anything or, or add any filters to it uh, until after the fact if I pull the audio and fix it there. Now one con, and this isn't a, a huge downside, but it does have to be a wired connection to whatever is your recording source, whether that's your computer or your phone, you do have to have this wire going to it. And um, unless you have like a long wire or USB extension system, setting up your, your setup, getting things set up can be a little bit tricky. So it doesn't really allow you to get up and move around, especially because if you do, you're gonna rattle this cord and that sounds terrible, right? Now, the other thing about these USB mics is that the quality will vary. You'll probably get what you pay for. 
Um, I paid $27 for this mic. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to wait a little bit before I take the next level up uh, and maybe spend, you know, between one and $200 on a microphone. But I think this is going to do fine for now. But just keep in mind, the quality will vary. You don't know exactly what you're going to get until you get it and try it out. But one of the big perks about this specific microphone is that it has onboard noise canceling. A lot of the other USB microphones I was looking at, even the more expensive ones, did not have that on the device. There's actually a it's actually a button right here and I can turn the noise canceling on and off. I'm gonna do that really quick. So now the noise canceling should be off and I think you can hear a bunch of ambient noise. I've got like a dehumidifier rolling back there and air conditioner is on and there's like cars outside and we're kind of near a river and sometimes there's some boats honking and you know, occasionally a train might go by. The dog might be trying to claw its way out of the room right now. I promise I'm not trapping her in there. But now we've got the noise canceling turned back on and everything should sound fine. And actually I have to check it really quick and make sure. Also a cool perk of this microphone, you can plug in your headphones and you can hear what it sounds like. So it sounds like noise canceling is back on. This was noise canceling off and this was noise canceling back on. So now that I know that it sounds good, I'm gonna unplug these. I will say one downside of this mic, it's very easy to bump the gain knob. So you don't want to do that and not realize what you've done. Um, I might stick some bright, colorful thing to exactly where I want to leave it for future videos so that uh, A, I know where to put it and B, I know if I bumped it. So again, this is the DMG20 by Maono, uh, which if you're wondering how to spell that, there you go. Um, this is the box it came in. It came with a cool little stand and it also came with an adapter so that I could put it on this boom stand that I already had. But it came with this cool tabletop stand here, which is handy if you have a desk set up and are gonna be right up on your computer screen. Also, if you're gaming or streaming, that kind of thing. But we're talking about YouTube and a boom arm is pretty useful for YouTube. So we will link this microphone down in the description as well. It is the one I'm recommending if you don't want to break the bank, but you want that onboard noise canceling. I saw microphones that cost a lot more that did not come with the noise canceling feature. And I have just found this to be so handy. Uh, I'm almost okay with the fact that the overall quality of the mic is just a little bit lower, maybe grainier than I would like, but um, I can adjust the position and the gain and how far away I am from it to kind of fix that. So I'm just going to roll with this for a while because the environment that I'm in, I don't want to pad the walls with anything. I don't want to noise cancel this room so um, or sound treat this room. So I'm going to roll with the $27 microphone that has noise canceling built in. So level one was the onboard microphone with your smartphone. Level two is gonna be a USB microphone that you know is plug and play and has some extra features. Moving on to level three, we're gonna talk about a separate audio recording device. So the, the idea here is that you would actually record the audio completely separately from your video and you would add the two together later in post. One device you can use to, to do this is the Zoom H1N, okay? This is a portable device. You can record directly onto a micro SD card with this, but this thing is pretty versatile. It, can, it has a few tricks up its sleeve. So one of the pros of having a separate audio recorder is that you don't have to have any audio interface, right? You don't have to have another physical piece of equipment to plug this thing into and you don't necessarily have to have a uh, special kind of software on the computer in order to capture the audio. It goes right onto here and then you just move the file onto the computer later on for editing. And this thing comes with some pretty sweet mics right here, which capture a, a good range of sound um, in the room, but they're also a little bit directional. That being said, if you wanna use a different mic or a lapel mic such as this, you can plug it directly into this. So as we're looking at it, the Zoom H1N has a uh, line in here and a line out on the other side. So red for line in, and we can actually plug our lapel mic right in there. And then you can clip it to your shirt or you can actually hold it here. You may have seen a lot of videos where people just hold the mic right here, or you can hold it kind of right under your chin. Uh, the audio you're hearing is not coming from this. It's still coming from this right now. So if you wanna see what this sounds like, I'd pull up another video, but this is pretty good because you can just put this thing in your pocket and you can either clip or hold your lapel mic here and you can walk around which is great if you're doing something like a selfie stick or you have another video crew following you around with a different camera you're gonna film the video separate from the audio and sync the two things up after the fact so it's cool that you can just have this in your pocket and it doesn't matter how far away you are from the camera you can still get excellent audio that sounds close up 
Another cool thing about the Zoom H1N is that you can actually turn it into a USB microphone. So just like I'm using this, the way that you would do it, you plug in a, a micro USB cord here and then connect that with uh, whatever input you need, either USB type A or type C on the other end into the computer or into the device, uh, the smartphone that you're using. So one of the downsides for the Zoom H1N is that the gain knob can be a little bit tricky. Um, there are some videos that I found on this that actually say there's an optimal range. I'm trying to remember exactly where it was, but I think it was like between 3.5 and like 5.5 or 6.5 is kind of the, the optimal range for the gain. Uh, anything higher or lower and it really like clips or, or cuts out and isn't really effective as a audio recording tool. And if you get a windscreen for this thing, just know that it's gonna cover up that gain knob, which is gonna make it kind of hard. I mean, it might actually bump it in the process of putting the thing on and, and change the gain setting that you found is optimal for your recording. Um, so just be careful. You do wanna get one of these if you're using this mic because you wanna avoid those P sounds and the S, -S sounds um, or just extra air. Uh, from around that will come into the, the mic and, and create noise you don't want, uh, unwanted noise. So windscreens are useful, but just keep in mind that they will block the gain knob on this device. The other major downside for this is that there is no noise canceling. So you will be at the mercy of the environment that you are in when you're recording. And then level four would of course be to spend some amount of money that's a little bit more on maybe a proper XLR setup, um, an audio interface, a mixer, something that's gonna connect that into a computer, uh, a little bit more advanced rigs. I'm not gonna get into what all those look like. Now, certainly you can have an XLR setup and a, and a microphone that's a lower quality. So just because I'm saying XLR is level four does not mean that it is the best option or the highest quality option. It does depend on what equipment you have, how you set it up, and making sure that everything is tweaked right before you really get started in filming. But I'd say that uh, some of those things apply to these other options as well. When I say level four, more in terms of difficulty. An XLR setup is going to require a little bit more know-how, a little bit more gear, and a little bit more, maybe even a lot more tweaking before you can actually get rolling with it. And if you made it this far in the video, I would love for you to leave a comment below and just let me know which of these audio setups seems to make the most sense for you. Um, are you already using one? Is there one that you're thinking of moving to? Uh, did you learn anything from this video with the pros and cons that might help you make a decision on that going forward? And as you're choosing the type of audio setup that you'll be using for your YouTube videos, there are a few things that I want you to consider. How exactly will you be filming? Are you gonna be using like a desk setup and a, a talking head video, kind of like this style of video? Or will you be walking around and you need an audio device that's gonna be on your person so that it sounds like you're close up even when the camera is very far away? Now I did promise you one tip at the end, which was gonna be if you're recording your audio separately from your video, how do you sync those up? What is the easiest way to do it? This is what I learned. The easiest way to sync those up is to do three big claps because on camera, you're gonna see when your hands are coming together. And when you're looking at the audio file, you will see a large spike when the clap occurred. When you have two or three of those, it's very easy to line up that sound with that visual of your hands actually coming together and everything should sync up perfectly if those things are in sync. Now, if you are just starting out on YouTube and you're trying to find your niche, you can't think of content ideas for your videos, you need help breaking through the barriers that are standing between you and your first 1,000 subscribers, then I have a playlist of videos that is specifically curated for you and you can click on that right here.